I'm going to assume that uh, if you're watching this section of the video, it means you have made the wise choice of learning everything about the system so that you can build it in survival. So to start things with, I needed a item sorter. So I, of course, went with the best design I know, which is Impulse SV's design, uh, which lets you choose which item to sort uh, by filling this slot right here. And then I used a modified version uh, that I had right here, just because it gives me a little bit more room to work with in comparison to this one. And it also allows me to do extra stuff. And you can learn a lot about this extra stuff if you watch my video named Overflow Redirection or something like that. I highly recommend watching this video. The next component I needed was a shulker box loader. This design was actually not made by me. It was presented to me by a member of my Discord server. Uh, and uh, I also know that this was based on a very popular design by Borcon, it's, which is a great design, really. It only has one flaw, which I kind of addressed with my system, but uh, of course we will talk more about it. So I can simulate it because I have a full shortcut box here with a snowball, so I can break this and place a full one here. The detection system breaks it, gets it stored, and then a new empty shortcut box is now available here. And uh, yeah, that's all it does. The one problem you might run into if uh, using this system is exactly this. Once the last shulker box is full and you run out of shulker boxes to replace it, the system is going to be empty. And even if you try to place shulker boxes inside it, it's not going to do anything because it it's, it's a requirement that the system gets primed, which is why I modified the system. I started by modifying the top uh, because it, it has to do with timings related to it being integrated into a lot of other redstone. And I also added this circuit back here. Uh, which accounts for this situation here with the empty loader. So if I now place an empty shulker box here, it's going to detect it and it's always going to try and place it. One last problem to deal with. The next step was to get it organized in a proper layout. So uh, I wanted it to have five chests right here because this is what the recategorizer looks like. And I wanted this system to be used as a module to my other sorting systems so they can be connected to each other. And the idea is uh, to sort all the items to the chests at the top and once we get full shulker boxes, they should be stored at the bottom here. So what I, all I need to do now is to connect this item sorter to the system, which is already done, but also to the, to the loader and connect the loader back to the storage at the front so that you can have an interface that looks seamless with all the other chests. So this next step was quite easy once I got the layout done. So here I have this uh, hopper facing this way into the barrel. So once all of these chests are completely full, there's no more room for items to go even inside this hopper. The items are going to naturally be redirected, redirected to this hopper line where they are going to end up inside the box loader. And once full, we can break the shulker boxes now and they are going to end up inside this dropper. But I added some redstone here that sends one extra pulse uh, to the dropper and then it's going to put the shulker box inside the shulker box storage here. I can uh, once again run a demonstration by placing a full shulker box here. See, it's going to break, it's going to power this uh, dropper and then we end up with two boxes there. But the limitation now is I really wanted to have five double chests here because I wanted that to be uh, seamlessly integrated with the rest of the storage system. Uh, but if I try to place another chest here and I place another hopper here, uh, when we get items through this hopper line, they're all going to end up at the bottom here and it's going to be mixed with the shulker um, storage. Uh, it is actually going to be prioritized, which is exactly what I don't want to happen. But before we are able to address the issue with the user interface, I thought I should take care of the back here where we are actually taking these empty shulker boxes as input. We want the shulker boxes to go where they need to go. We don't want like this barrel to be completely uh, full of shulker boxes, then this hopper and this barrel and everything else before it starts filling up other slices, which is why I added this small circuit here. And what it does is, uh, I added two buttons here, actually. <laughs> um, once this shulker box is full, and let's try to simulate this by placing a full shulker box here, it's going to break the shulker box and it's going to send a signal to this top uh, dropper, this pair of droppers here, and this is going to be unpowered. So let's try to simulate this. Shulker box gets broken and this gets unpowered. It means that now this system is requesting a new shulker box. And if we provide the empty shulker box to the system, it recognizes it and locks itself. So yeah, this now is a system that's not going to hog all the shulker boxes uh, available in the system, which is amazing. It means we can finally take a second look at the user interface. And this is what I came up with. So see, it looks pretty cool. In my opinion, it really looks nice. And it always started because I wanted to add this functionality here where by flicking a lever, we are now able to lock uh, this hopper. So it doesn't have a priority anymore. And items uh, once sorted can now uh, be forced into this direction so they can be directly loaded inside uh, the shulker box loader. We needed a solid block to be here. 
but because a solid block is here, we are not able to open a chest if it's placed in here. Uh, we can see an example right here where we have a solid block on top of a chest. If I keep clicking on it, we are not able to open it. I'm not sure how useful this functionality is to Minecraft, but it has existed since the beginning of the game. But if we use barrels or shulker boxes, we can now open our storage uh, normally. And we also have all the five levels of storage that we wanted. And it also makes a little bit more sense to me because uh, what we want with a system like this is to just have access to a few items here. If we really want access to a lot of items, we can just use uh, a, a double, a double uh, chest like we have here or just have a barrel here, which is storage for 20 shulker boxes, all full with 27 stacks of items themselves. And um, this is pretty cool. I also had to modify the redstone here at the bottom. You can compare uh, the two here. See, I'm only using one dropper there, and now here I had to use uh, a pair of droppers here because I wanted to avoid the problem with this uh, hopper specifically. At this point, I got all the basic functionality I wanted all implemented, uh, and all that's left to do is for us to test how these things do uh, when placed side by side. And now we have a hopper line uh, at the top that makes sense. So this is for item input uh, to the item sorters, as you can see here. And at the back, we have the input for the shulker boxes. At this point, everything seems to be running perfectly well. I started running a bunch of tests. And what I realized is the one limitation uh, with Borcon's uh, shulker box loader system that I mentioned before, which is sometimes when it breaks the shulker box, it, the shulker box doesn't exactly go where it needs to go. See, we want a shulker box to be broken in front of where the shulker box used it to be. It's going to be pushed by this piston anyways. And this works most of the time. I don't know how much, maybe 99% of the time. But sometimes uh, the shulker box is going to fall to the side. So it's going to end up, so let's say if this shulker box gets broken, it's going to end up either inside the hopper below this comparator or inside this one, uh, which might happen. And the problem now is uh, the slices are completely independent, which means they're going to power specifically this dropper here and not this one because it has a different kind of rail here see how i keep alternating these uh, but if this guy breaks a shulker box and this instead of ending up inside this one it ends up on the sides it's not going to be powered so your shulker boxes are actually going to be stuck on these sides now guys trust me when i say i tried a bunch of variations on the system i tried everything i could possibly try in order to solve this problem and i actually came up with some solutions but uh most of them are just not adequate or not simple enough just don't fit the kind of system that i'm trying to do so i eventually found a solution but it's not ideal and it ended up also being the limitation with my own system so as weird as it sounds and with all the testing I've done, and I know I'm going to sound lazy here, <laughs> despite all the work I've done, the solution I came up, <laughs> the solution that came up to be is, if it's not going to fall inside the correct hopper, let it be. Let it just happen. I decided to find a way to power the neighboring uh, droppers here so that we can have the, the items at least go to the front of your storage system and not be stuck inside this uh, droppers at the bottom. So I decided to make a new version. So it's hard to see the difference between those two, but basically, here we have a pair uh, of observers, and here I am using a node block to update the observers at the bottom. Uh, all the redstone is exactly the same. See, the pair of droppers at the bottom, exactly the same. But uh, what this does now is, because now uh, node blocks are solid blocks, when they get powered from the observer, they're also going to power the two uh, node blocks on the sides, which means whenever a slice is activated, uh, everything's going to be executed within that same slice without any interference from the sides, except at the last step. On the last step, this is going to also power these two droppers, just in case the item, fall, the item falls inside uh, the neighboring uh, hoppers. In that case, these are going to be powered, as well as these, and then your items are always guaranteed to end up in the front here. So uh, if you can't immediately see your shulker box uh, with your items in there, you need to check the shulker boxes on the sides, and you're going to, for sure, find your shulker box. Yes, I know not a perfect solution, but it's a very simple solution for this kind of problem. And, uh, well, I'm kind of planning on addressing this issue once again before the end of the video. So besides this fixer change, I also made a little change to the item distribution system. So you can see here that the slices, uh, as expected, they operate individually. But now we have uh, a rail line connecting all of them. And uh, this, these solid blocks here at the top are the ones that are going to get a pulse whenever the, the, sh the shulker box loader is finished unloading a box, which means they need a new box. The final addition to this stage of the design is this uh, category for non-stackable items here. So uh, all I did is, uh, after all the sorters, I need to add this little contraption here with the target block, a pair of comparators, and this is enough to sort uh, the non-stackable items at any speed, even with mixed items and things like that. 
And as I demonstrated at the beginning of the video, it can also account for items that it doesn't recognize. For the next stage of this project, I decided to redesign the interface once again. And this is just one idea to show you guys that you can really shape this to be uh, in whatever way you want it. The redstone was specifically designed to give you the freedom uh, to change the, the user interface here. So in this example, uh, if you think that uh, a single chest or barrel is not enough for your needs, uh, we can have double chests here, no problem. And you can even mix them with uh, choker boxes. But once again, because those are full solid blocks, they're going to interfere with uh, double chests here. So I added the double chests for a um, uh, bunch of double chests actually here at the bottom for the choker box storage here and just have this gap here uh, which I use it stairs to complete. So yeah, it still looks really nice. We don't have the interactive uh, options here with the levers, but you might not need those as well. They are not required. This is just something that you might want. At this point, I thought I was finally ready for the last step, which is to add a input system. So we have our sorters here. We already know everything it can do. Uh, so what about a input system? The input system just needs to be able to take items from somewhere the player is usually going to be, which is floor height. Uh, this one. So it's going to require a item elevator, which is exactly what we have here. You have seen me use the item elevator in pretty much everything related to storage uh, at this point. And at the top here, I added a very simple filter. So if it's not a shulker box that's being placed down there, uh, the items go through this path where they can be sorted by the item sorters. And if it's not uh, a stackable item, then it ends up down this path where it can be stored uh, by these, uh, this storage here, including uh, the, all the functionality with uh, the shulker box loader at the back here, the compressing <laughs> functionality. And if it's not something that we can recognize or a non-stackable item, it goes through this path. By the way, the non-stackable item filter here is optional. Uh, this is You can have your slices be whatever you want. You can have uh, as many as you want here. Uh, the rails, as you can see here, are a limitation because they can only be powered for up to nine blocks. But uh, with this system now, you can see that uh, once we run out of uh, signal strength here, uh, with the powered rails, we can use this these three blocks here, this little arrangement here, and alternate to a different kind uh, of rail system, which is the activator rails, and then continue uh, powering this thing. You will also notice that I changed the distribution system, not because I needed to, but because I wanted to show you that it's possible to do different things. With this one, we are just uh, using a hopper line, which is a little bit limited, uh, but it goes around and stores things. Uh, stuff mostly inside this dropper, which is also very limited, but it also gives you this extra input here if you want to place things, uh, more shulker boxes manually inside the system. And what this one does is, since we already have a filter here, shulker boxes are going to go automatically through this hopper line here and they will end up inside this dropper here. It's a, it's a bit of a confusing system because I wanted to have it be a little bit compact. Uh, and what this system does now is, well, uh, as we learned, this uh, these slices are able to request new shulker boxes through this rail line here and they send a pulse uh, through this uh, observer to the rail system okay that's that's all right but what we have now here is also a, a request counter system with a pair of droppers here because what can happen is the minecart goes on its way and by the time it arrives at the other end another slice decides that it also needs a shulker box it's it's always moving five shulker box at a time but maybe you're, you want to expand your bulk storage system to have something like 100 different slices because you're crazy you're, you're crazy like that in that case uh the system needs to let this uh the distribution system knows that the minecart was probably going to need to do a second or maybe a third trip so for every trip we need to have uh two uh request counters here so we can basically have more items here as needed. And every time the minecart returns, the counter is decreased again uh, until it resets completely. And uh, all the, uh, the slices finally get the shulker boxes that they need. The problem is shulker boxes, unfortunately, are not stackable. I, I really think they should be stackable when empty, but uh, this is not what's happening uh, in survival Minecraft vanilla at least, right? So what I have here is a system that assesses when we have enough items here, and then it empowers this section of the build and then this hopper is able to steal <laughs> uh, some shulker boxes and have them stored inside these double chests here. So we have a lot of space for extra shulker boxes here. And if this ever runs out of space, then we're going to lock this. I can try to simulate this by removing these shulker boxes here. So see, now uh, this has been locked and the, the item elevator has been activated to pull more shulker boxes inside the system. So if I look now, uh, we're going to have three shulker boxes here. We can do this again just to... Just so you can see that, yeah, it automatically triggers the system to try and pull items out of this. I also made a quite interesting change to the bottom uh, of the redstone here. See, now I'm, I am not using uh, the note block trick here that I just explained. Uh, instead, I'm going to power these guys individually, but then 
this layer is going to be like this with the uh, three droppers. And because of that, uh, we are going to still be able to uh, sort the problem of sugar boxes not falling exactly where they need to be. But also we have some instant uh, item transfer trick that we are using here. As you can see, we have a hopper line here. It finally adds the shulker box overflow storage to the system. The way it works is exactly the same way that this uh, filter uh, works here. So we are powering uh, this dropper through this observer. This is strong power, which means it's going to power this block and this uh, at the same time. And what's going to happen is the items are going to be transferred instantly from this dropper inside uh, this shulker box. Unless it, it is a shulker box, uh, which means it's not going to go inside the shulker box. It's going to end up here, and then we can um, separate these items using this hopper here. This is exactly what's going to happen here. We're powering this dropper from the top using an observer. And because those two get instantly powered, the item either fits here, or if it doesn't, it's going to be picked up by the hopper. And this is the trick I use to uh, filter the overflow uh, out of this system. But now we kind of have to add some control for the overflow, don't we? And now we have finally walked the full circle. Uh, when I get to present once again uh, the full system with all the features, now it has the proper input system, it has the overflow system at the back, we got the distribution system at the back, here uh, the extension for the number of slices, the uh, non stackable item filter on the side, the warning system with the lamp here. Although it just warns you, it doesn't do anything about these items it doesn't stop the system but we can we can probably take a signal out of this comparator or something else and then extend it to your input system so that uh, it won't let you put any more items inside the system we have the shulker box storage system with a smart uh, overflow control here and uh, all this stuff but in the end and i swear literally 10 minutes before i decided to publish this video i came up with the idea of having these buttons here uh, and then hooking them up uh, to the system for the final functionality, which is the ability to pull uh, half or partially full shulker boxes out of the system. And the way this is done is uh, when you press these buttons here, I can break some blocks here to show you guys this. Uh, the node blocks are going to update the pistons, and then we're going to change the shape on these uh, stone brick walls, which is going to be detected by the observers. And then we have this tricky observer placed in the middle of the slice. Maybe we can have a better view from this side. Yes, I basically now have this <laughs> and this can trigger the whole thing that makes this get broken and then sent to the storage uh, with the droppers being activated as well as not find the system at the top. It all works perfectly. Uh, but once again, <laughs> oh, you guys are going to are going to want to kill me. I had to modify this this bit here. Yeah, you can you can see how it's going now. So now we don't have the same dropper set up here. And that's because since we have more droppers here, uh, the timings have changed. So I had to adapt. And once again, we had to use solid blocks here. So my choice for now was to use uh, dispensers. And inside the dispensers, we have filler items so, such as these. So we have shears and bone meal because they can never get out of the system uh, because they're powered like this and they're not connected to anything. They're, the bone meal is not going to be applied to anything and the shears are not going to be applied to anything. So uh, this will keep the signal strength at level 14, as you can see here. And this is another trick that I had to use here in order to have this amazing interface that uh, is hopefully intuitive and easy to use. If you place a full or even worse, partially full shulker box inside your input system, uh, you might run into problems because the system is going to recognize that this is a shulker box, so it's going to send it to the empty shulker box storage, which is not the ideal thing to do. So what you can do instead is to, instead of uh, redirecting this hopper line directly into this kind of storage, you can redirect this hopper line back to this barrel here. And what this is, is, uh, do I have a name for this? I don't think I do. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a uh, shulker box level filter. So let's just do an example. Uh, inside the shulker box, I have uh, completely full shulker boxes, which are the, the, the white shulker boxes, partially full shulker boxes, and completely empty shulker boxes. So if I pick this up, and I'm probably going to have to break the sign here. And if I place it here, you will see that uh, it will quickly sort uh, through the shulker boxes. So up here, you will see every shulker box that has at least one item. See, the full shulker boxes are partially full. And down here, you will only see the empty shulker boxes. So this acts as a filter that you could use uh, in conjunction with this system. And uh, if you do want, so there is another option by flicking this lever. And I can replace this variable once again. You can basically change the filter to a different level. So now, instead of just sorting for 
empty shulker boxes, it's not going to separate the full shulker boxes. So up here, we only have completely full shulker boxes. And down here, we have shulker boxes that are either partially uh, empty or that are completely empty. Despite all of my efforts, one question still remains. Can we actually solve the problem of shulker boxes falling inside the wrong places, inside the wrong hoppers? Well, it turns out uh, we actually can sort this out, kind of. Uh, if I place a shulker box here, and you can see that uh, it's full with items, and if we press this button now, uh, what I'm doing here is I am using a zero tick pulse here. And after so many hours, I also realized that, that uh, you cannot always use a cauldron here, unfortunately, because for some reason, this uh, hitbox doesn't work. Sometimes what I believe happens, because I don't really know for sure, is when you use a zero tick, you're basically teleporting the block to a different location. And because it already has a shulker box, uh, it realizes it has to break. But it, when it breaks, the item collides with the internal uh, walls of the, of the composer, and then it ends up inside it. And it seems to work 100% of the time. I don't really know if it ever fails, but it seems to work 100% of the time. So uh, what we're going to do now is to have this composer somehow be connected to a hopper so that we can pull the item out of this. So let's try with this hopper here. If we have a hopper now down here, we should be able to get this item. Yeah, not always. See, <laughs> in this specific case, just because I am recording this, maybe this is valuable. I don't know. We're not able to pick up this item using the hopper. Well, that's another problem. So with the idea of using a composter, first of all, we just have this problem that I just demonstrated here. Uh, but also there is a second problem, which is kind of funny, <laughs> uh, which is if you're trying to uh, fill the shulker boxes with items that go inside composters, they're going to be activated. Let, let's try this with some other wart here. And uh, if we have a full shulker box here, see this composter got uh, items from, yeah, now it's level two. Let's try maybe with the cake because cakes are very efficient. Uh, to fill uh, composters and yeah, you're going to keep getting levels until eventually the, the composter uh, decides to make some actual <laughs> bone meal here. So uh, see, now we have, uh, now we got bone meal inside the chest. So this is a minor inconvenience, but it's, I don't know. <laughs> we probably need to feed items uh, uh, to the shulker boxes from the side here to avoid this problem, but this requires redesigning and this is time I just don't have because people have been bugging me for <laughs> The system should be done for a long time now, and I have spent many weeks, probably more than a month, trying to get things together here. And at least I'm happy that we have all this functionality uh, with the system now. And then I think that uh, if anything doesn't work here, you guys are probably going to help me on Discord, and we are going to be able to figure this out together. But um, other than that, I think this system is pretty amazing, pretty awesome. Uh, has all the functionalities that you would uh, possibly want from a bulk storage. Uh, and I hope that you guys like it as well. You can also join me on Discord. We can also try to design things together because we do have a server where we can play together on Creative and share ideas. And if you want this map to be available for you guys to download and try things out by yourselves, just let me know in the comments as well and I will see what I can do. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Thank you guys. Thank you for the patrons for this month. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. And see you next time, guys. Goodbye.